All right, yeah, I've got a two, I, I bought a new iPad. So what I'm doing, I'm still figuring out how to use it, but um, what I want to do is double film the lesson and then you'll have a YouTube way Great. to watch it. So the, the, um, the playback will be a little bit better. You know, the quality, that's my hope. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a good thing, right? Okay, so make sure you've got, so we're not going to, I don't think we're going to be doing too much painting. We really want to focus on the drawing. And I see that Ruben already got an amazing drawing on his canvas. He sent it to me. I was like, oh my gosh, he's ahead of us. He's ahead of us. <laughs> so, but I really want to make sure that we get an accurate drawing down and take our time with it too before we put um, all this color on. And then, you know, we can talk, we can mix a few colors and talk about the technique of, um, you know, pointillism and uh, take it from there. I still don't see Tim. Let's see, who are we missing? We've got one, two, wait, one, two, three, just four people. We had seven sign up and I know some people couldn't make it. Who else are we missing? Hmm. Where's Julio? Julio signed up. Yeah, oh, where is he? Yeah. Where's Julio? <laughs> you, did you know he He'll signed up? He'll go crazy up? with these points. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he, well, I knew when I picked this painting up that he would be interested in in, paint, in creating this painting here. Um, oh, I think, oh, I think Tim is here. Um, I think his name was Tim, Tim O'Connell. I'm seeing another person just signed in. I'm guessing that's him um, because his camera... His camera wasn't able to work. Well, welcome aboard. If that's you, Tim O'Connell, I'm so glad that you can join us today. Um, so yeah, I wanna. What we're gonna focus on for today is getting um, the the drawing on the canvas. Okay. So we're not gonna go too crazy with the color. I really wanna make sure that you guys feel very comfortable um, with this drawing. So one thing you can do. I hope you have a printout that you can use. Okay. You can see how I have an actual piece of paper here that you can look at. If not, you know, you can pull it up like on your cell phone and maybe draw on top of that. Um, but it's just really helpful to have something physical to, uh, to hold. So one of the things I'm noticing um, is in this drawing, now you can use pencil to draw if you want, or what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some brown, and if you don't have brown, I can show you how to mix it, or maybe a nice warm green and uh, we can actually paint. I, I like to paint because it's just much easier to, and, and more fluid um, to mix. Some people think it's a little weird to draw with paint, but it's it should be fine. I think you'll be fine. Um, okay, so let's just take a minute and kind of take this painting in here before we jump in and just notice all the different elements. Like you don't want to just jump in and just like go crazy, you know, painting for me is really a mindfulness, an exercise in mindfulness, okay? So let me bring this camera in a little bit closer so we get a better view here. Okay, so as I was saying, it's an exercise in mindfulness. and noticing all the different elements so and even counting them because sometimes counting can help so what do we have well we have the water right and then we have the sky we have these mountains off here in the distance we have these trees one two three trees it would seem that there are two boats two boats I don't think this is a boat way off here. This seems to be uh, a dock because it seems to be pretty connected to the land. So this line right here would seem to be a dock. It's just such a beautiful painting. What else do we have? We have another dock over here. We have a pillar or a post of some kind. And then we have these lines one, two, three, and then they are crossed by lines, making little X's. Like what else can you see? Do you see how it makes a beautiful reflection? And do you see how the reflection is made up of dots? So don't just look at the screen on Zoom, especially if the resolution is a little weird. Try and look at it on a secondary device or look actually look at your printout, okay? 
and then just kind of notice these things. And you can notice them on your own or you can kind of follow along with me. So in the foreground here, we have the ground, which makes a beautiful deep V. And it would seem like the point here would seem to come up almost straight through the middle of this boat. It's so beautifully thought out. Um, and in fact, if we lined this point up with this point, oh, it doesn't quite line. Oh, wow, look at that. It's almost perfectly lines up with this pole here. So this is very different than Monet, right? Monet was all about capturing atmosphere and blustering clouds and rapidly changing, um, you know, here, let me, do I need to lower this a little bit so you can see the whole thing? Yes, I do. There we go. Oh, I need to mute you guys because I can hear a little bit of feedback there. Hang on. I'm gonna mute. And then you can unmute yourself if you have a question. All right. So, as I was saying, this point here, this V, almost perfectly lines up with this pole here. Almost, not quite. And so it's very, very deliberate. It's thought out, it's planned. With Monet, he would take his canvas and he would go outside and he'd try to, to like work very rapidly. And he would try to, you know, do everything there on the spot, right? But with Signac, he would make very, very careful um, like studies and then he'd bring them back in the studio and then he'd make a very careful drawing and then work on this in his studio. So we had time, so it's much more organized, right? So what else do we have? We have a pole here and we have another pole here or a post that you can probably tie your boats up to. On the boat here, we can see all these people. How many people can you count? I can count one, two, three, four people. How many sails on this boat can you count? I can count one, two, three, four. And then there's another one here that seems to be kind of catching in the air. You see this one right here? It's kind of catching in the air. There's a house right off in here. And is this another house? It's a little hard to see. I may have to pull it up um, on my phone and actually zoom in on it here. Yeah, it seems like it's a, another little house there. It's very far away, so it's just an assemblage of colored dots. You can see how different it looks on my phone. It's much more red. So if it's looking a little bit different on your phone, that's just because of the settings and the way it's printed. So you can see how orange it is on mine. Do you see the little fence back here? There's like a little fence right here. This boat has no sails because they're rolled up, but it does have these two poles. And then you can see that the sails would seem to be rolled up, or maybe these are the ropes. They're probably rolled up sails though because they're kind of thick and I'm not sure if you'd see ropes from that far away. You can also see the reflection here in the water right here. So now that we've talked about the different things, I think I've named almost every one. Let's talk about the um, let's talk about the shapes. It's, it's a little too early to talk about colors. So if you can see like the water here, if I were to take my brush and hold it, this is the horizon right here, this line that separates the water from the mountains. And it's a pretty, if I were to judge it against it's sl actually slanting a little bit, which surprised me. I'm not sure if it printed that way, but if I hold this here, you can see that it's slanting ever so slightly. There's a little bit more room here than there is here, which actually would make for a more dynamic composition. So it is slanting a little bit. 
Now, you don't have to copy this exactly. If you want to straighten yours out, you can, right? But I'm going to show you how to paint this, but you don't have to do um, anything that I'm saying if you think, if you want to make an improvement on it. Okay, so if we were to look at this line here and then connect it to this, you can see how this makes like this shape right here. How many shapes can you count back here in the mountains, right? So this mountain is passing in front of this one. This is behind this one. We've got this one that's in front of this one. The sails are all triangles, but triangles with curved lines. We could actually draw them with straight lines and then build curved lines on top. And these trees are just kind of organic forms. This looks like an oval, very stylized trees, very idealized forms. Um, and then if you look at the people, the people actually like people, uh, you know, when if you haven't drawn or painted people before, you might think like, oh, you know, this is this is frightening. But if you look at them really closely, the shapes aren't that hard to do. Truly, they aren't. And what helps them pop is that they are so dark and then each one is surrounded by this, this brilliant um, yellow. And that's what makes them pop, even though they're so far away. They're very dark, surrounded by that, that bright color. Okay, so let's just jump in. If you are drawing, we're gonna jump in and do our drawing and we're gonna start with the biggest shapes first. Quite often for me, that means the horizon line, which is going to separate the sky from the water. Okay, so if you are going to be painting, choose a brown if you have it. If um, you don't have a brown, you may mix a brown or you can just use something like a red. I like a brown because it's like a neutral red. It's a, it's a dark enough color that it shows up but it's not, it's not too intense, right? So, and if you're, if you're drawing with a pencil, make sure that you've got the pencil nice and sharp and you have an eraser nearby. It's up to you. So this is my brown. I'm just using burnt sienna. And I know that I, that was not on the supply list. So I'm gonna show you really quick how to mix a brown. Now, if this is your first time using oil paint, I think somebody said this was their first time using oil paint. You want to make sure that you have, um, you know, your linseed oil out to thin it out with. You want to make sure you have your paint thinner. And so I'm just taking this paint and I am using a paper plate because I've learned that it's just so much easier to hold up in front of the camera and people can see the colors that much better. So I'm going to get some yellow. This is cadmium yellow, cadmium red, and then a little tiny bit of ultramarine blue. And basically to mix this color, basically you want to mix an orange first. So I'm going to get a little bit of red here. I'm going to get a little bit of yellow. And then I'm going to add a tiny drop of blue and just stir it up. And it doesn't matter if it's like a dark brown, you know, just get a nice neutral color. And this is for those of you who don't have brown. Right? So that's a nice, just a brick color, right? So start with orange, which is yellow and red, and then add a tiny drop of blue, tiny, because if you add too much blue, well, you could, you could add, you could add more blue if you want. It's just going to make it darker. Okay. And then you're, what you're going to want to do is water that down. You can either use water if you're using acrylic paint or you can use linseed oil or paint thinner. And so I'm just gonna dip my brush here 
into the linseed oil that I have into this little, I just keep it in a little glass jar right here like this. See? And, you know, Tim, if I'm, I'm, I'm speaking, I, I just don't want, I've had some pe beginners say that they were overwhelmed. If you're at all overwhelmed, just watch this lesson through and then you can come back and rewatch it. Sometimes it's helpful just to watch the first time. So I'm going to get a little bit of this linseed oil and um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to gonna jump straight into my burnt sienna because that is the color that I have. And I'm just going to get this all nice and... Uh, kind of runny. You want it to be kind of the consistency of um, heavy whipping cream. <laughs> so not water, not milk, not half and half, heavy whipping cream. Have you ever seen that stuff? It's delicious, okay? Yeah, it's what you use to make whipped cream. It's super, super good. And it's so, go for something, if you haven't seen it before, go for something thicker than half and half, all right? But you want it to flow, but you don't want it to be too watery because then it's just gonna run all over your, um, run all over your canvas, right? So just adjust and just keep dipping your brush into the, into the water or the linseed oil until you have a nice kind of little soup here. Kind of like, I don't know, tomato soup. I'm sure most of you got, well, yeah, kind of like tomato soup, a soup consistency. All right, so I've got that. You can also use a pencil, nothing against that. Okay, now this drawing, if you don't think that your first brush stroke has to be absolutely perfect, it absolutely does not, okay? It really doesn't. If you get something that's off, did I move this in too close? Here, let me zoom this back out and raise it up again. Oh yeah, I, I brought it in so you could see the printout. Now I'm gonna raise it up so you can see the whole canvas, okay. So I'm using an 11 by 14 canvas. I'm not sure what size you're using. I do think that the proportions of this painting are a little bit longer. This is a little bit more square. So it might end up, you know, pushing pushing the design in a little bit, and that's okay. That's okay. If that bothers you, <laughs> I know there's some people out there who want to do exactly what they're seeing. You can draw a little line across the top, you know, about maybe an inch down, and then don't paint above that line, and then, then, and then what you can do is you can actually cut this out from the stretcher bars. You can actually cut it out, right? and mount it. You can glue it and mount it, right? So you can make this your own. All right. So the first thing we need to do is find where this horizon line is. And as I said, it is slanting. I think it gives it a more exciting uh, feel. Let's move this like this here. And um, it's not, it's, it's a tricky placement, isn't it? Because it doesn't divide the canvas into thirds exactly, but it's also not one halfway. So here's how you can test this. Hold, hold the, the printout up and then take your, pen, your, pen, your paintbrush and slide it up and down like this and find where that line falls in relation to the edge of the printout, okay? So it would seem to hit a little above halfway. That's the best way I can describe it. So if I were to find halfway, which would be about, let me use my fingers as a judge here, would be about right here. It's a little bit above that. So all I gotta do is do the same thing here. I'm just gonna go, this is about halfway here, approximately, and then go just a little bit above that. And that's going to be my horizon line. And just make a dot right there. So I made a little, let me make it a little bit bigger so you can see it. Make a dot there. And then you can either take a ruler or you can eyeball it. If I were to take a ruler, I would come across. But remember, it's diagonal. And this, I think it was, yeah, it's, it's higher up over on this side. So I'm going to sink it down just a little bit lower. So this is where it is, and then I'll sink it down just a little bit lower, right there. 
If you want, you can make a series of dots or dashes and then connect them. I am using a round brush. Now you'll find that the harder you push, the thicker a line you're going to make. So what you want to do is push very, don't push very hard at all because we want to make a, skin, a skinny line if we can. And then, oh, I don't know why I'm, I'm drawing from a weird angle here. There. Now, if you're using acrylic and you make a mistake, um, just let it dry. It'll be dry in less than five minutes. And just paint over it with white. I'm just gonna correct this line right here. And I'm using oil paint, so what I'm just doing is I'm kind of trimming this with the paint thinner. I'm just like kind of wiping away the paint. Okay. So now we've separated the sky from the land. And it is a slight diagonal. The next line I want to draw is going to be this V here. And that's going to separate the foreground from the water. All right, so with this one, I wanna make sure, are these two points totally lined up? Usually I don't get a ruler and everything, but this drawing is so technical that I really want to do it justice. Let's see. Yeah, that side over there is a little higher. So if you hold this ruler up, you can see like there's a little bit, there's a little bit of extra space right over on this side here. All right. So it would be approximately, and I am eyeballing this part, um, about right here. And then this is gonna be a little higher than that. About right here. Now, if I were... Hello, Elizabeth. This is Julio. I just joined in. Oh, Sorry hello, for being... Julio. We're just getting the drawing on. Yes, yes, I can see it. I will go back to mute. Thank you. I'm sorry for being late. No worries. It's okay. I understand. So basically, Julio, what we just did is we put in our horizon line. We're using burnt sienna. If you don't have burnt sienna, you're just going to mix a brown, which is just uh, yellow. Right. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Um, so basically, I was trying to find exactly where this was, and I think it is, I think it's at thirds. So if I'm going to hold this here, and I hold my ruler right here, let's see. Does this divide it into thirds? It's you know it's you know I'm going to use my paintbrush. This ruler is a little, it's a little klutzy. So this is better. Hmm. Almost. Yeah. This is about one third of the way over. I think it's a little bit more. Like, I, I don't think Signac was quite that straightforward. With some painters, it's very straightforward. You can find that the painting is like either divided into fourths or thirds, okay, at important points. And I don't, I think this is a little bit more than a third. So find one third of the way over and then a little bit more. And you can just take your two brushes like this or two pencils or whatever you've got, kind of divide it into thirds like this, see? I've got more space over here and less over there, right? And then I think I said it was a little bit more than a third, so we'll come just a little bit over, take a little hop over, get my 
paintbrush and make a dot right there. Actually, it's a little bit up, right? And then all we got to do is connect the two dots. So connect here to here. And then we're going to come over here and connect this to here. So I like to warm up a little bit, just like go back and forth, kind of feel the line and then come in for the landing. And if it's wobbly, don't stress, <laughs> okay? It's okay. This is just, um, this is, all this is, is the under, the underpainting. So you can always paint on top, right? Right. Elizabeth. Oh, sorry. I muted you, Julio. Unmute yourself. You're muted. Yes, thank you. Sure. Um, you, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt again. Um, do you have a recommendation for the canvas size, please? Oh, 11 or by 14. 11 by 14 is a really nice one. I think 16 by 20, I mean, it's doable, but you're going to have to make a lot of dots. Yeah, right. That's what, that, yes, yes, exactly that what I was thinking of. Okay, so is 11, yeah, right. Okay, yeah. thank you. Sure. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think 11 by 14 is a good size for this painting in particular. Usually I'm like, ah, oh, you know, pick any rectangular canvas, but we're going to be making a lot of dots. <laughs> okay, so we have that. And um, what's the next biggest shape we can put in? Um, why don't we put in the line at which these houses and the trees are resting. And you can see it's just a little bit below the diagonal there. Okay, now there's actually two, like this is one line right here. Let me hold this up a little closer. So this is one line right here. And then back behind the boat, this is a little slightly higher line. Okay, so I'm going to come here and we're going to sink down just a little bit. And just kind of draw. And it is, it does seem to be pointing up a little bit. And it does seem to be following a diagonal there too. So this is going to be the line where the house is going to be. And then a little bit above that, we have this um, other dock right here. And I'm just going to kind of briefly put that in. Now, you can always take your paper towel like this. If you get a line on and you don't like it, just take a little bit of paper towel, dip it into some paint thinner. Okay, try not to get too much on your hands. It is a chemical, <laughs> you know. Um, and then you can just like wipe it away really easily. You can do the same thing with the acrylic if you're using acrylic paint. But this this should just wipe it away really easily. And so you can make as many mistakes as you like. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, now that we've got that in, let's put this other line right here. The other, you see how that's just a little bit below the horizon line, the other dock? So, get a little bit of the linseed oil here and it's just another little parallel line right below that one. And there that is. It feels good getting all these foundations in, doesn't it? It feels good to me. <laughs> okay. One thing that might really, really help you is if you were to take this and fold it in half perfectly, as well as you can, you know, get the, the edges all matched, 
all matched up here. All right? So fold it in half. And then fold it in half the other way. So you got it this way and then fold it. So you, you're making a T. And this will create quadrants and you can find which shapes lie in which quadrant. So fold it this way. And you also have discovered where the center of your painting is. And the center is usually, oh, that's a, this is really cool. The center is, seems to be at the intersection of where this dock is, almost touching that boat, right there. Let me point at it with my paintbrush so you can see better. It's right here. Pretty cool. So this should be at the exact center right here. Is it though? <laughs> well, actually, it's, it's, it, as I said, I am using an 11 by 14, so it is um, a little squished. So things might not line up in the exact same way. Does that make sense? Because this, this is longer and this is more of a square shape. So, but it's helpful to know where the center is. of your canvas. Okay. And you can actually see that the, the docks, when you fold it, the docks line right up on the halfway there, on the halfway mark. You see that right here? So that's a good thing to check. So I, the way I check is I take my hand like this and I hold it and then I lock it and then I drop it down and well, I think it's a little higher. Yeah, it's just a little bit higher. Well, it's a thick line. Ha! <laughs> I'll just use the lower part of it. There. That's where it is. <laughs> right. So now that we've done that... Let's put in a sketch for these. Let's do something a little bit different. Let's, I'm gonna get some more linseed oil. Let's draw in this little house here. So this little house is kind of sitting right here. We wanna leave room at the end. So basically you're just gonna start with a box like this. So it's like a little box. And then two lines going like this. See? So they're pointing this way, parallel. And then this is going to go straight across like that. We've got another line like this, and then this comes down. So we've got our little house. So I started with the front box here. I did two diagonal parallel lines. I connected them with a straight line across the top. I created another line going this way and then dropped this down. These three lines are parallel. These two lines are parallel. This line is parallel with this line. Okay, I'm not sure if you could see with the way my hand was, I'll, I'll explain it again. These two lines are parallel, actually one, two, three. Parallel, 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 and parallel. See? And then this is kind of going off to create.